Hello viewers, in this video we are going to learn about mechanism of pathogenesis. The pathogenesis of a disease is the biological mechanism that leads to the disease state. The term can also describe the origin and development of the disease and whether it is acute, chronic or recurrent. The word comes from Greek word pathos that means disease and genesis means creation means the, dis the process of disease, the mechanism of the disease that leads to the disease state, right? Now, if we talk about microbial mechanism of pathogenesis, it starts with the entry of the microbe in the body, right? So, the microbe must have an, a portal of entry. It can be mucous membranes of different systems like respiratory tract, GI tract, genito -urin urinary tract, conjunctiva, okay, and also some breaks in skin or parenteral roots. Okay. Once the microbe gets an entry into the body, it can adopt a number of uh, mechanism to penetrate and evade host system and you know make a permanent niche in the host right so it depends on how many uh, what is the number of invading microorganisms and also on their adhering properties so they can penetrate and evade the host system through different mechanisms like forming formation of capsules through their cell wall components by secreting some enzymes or even uh, exhibiting antigenic variants and producing invasions right special proteins that help in invasion of these microorganisms or sometimes they evade host mechanism by intracellular growth so they won't be detected right and once they penetrate and uh, make a niche and reside inside the host they start damaging the host cells through different mechanisms like formation of cytophores, direct damage through toxins, right? Toxins can be of different types, exotoxins, endotoxins, or uh, they may undergo lysogenic conversions, right? If they are viruses, right? And then they start exhibiting cytopathic effects. They start changing the morphology and shape and other parameters of uh, host cells. So they show uh, start damaging cells, they transform the cells, they show different specs on the cells and also then once they have damage, cause the damage, they may exit from different portals of exits. Generally the portal of exits are the same as the portals of the entry. Now the key concept is that several factors are required for a microbe to cause disease. After entering the host, most pathogens adhere to the host tissues penetrate or evade the host defense and damage host tissues. Pathogens usually leave the body via specific portals of exit, which are generally the same as the sites where they get entry into the host. Now, let us know a few terms related to pathogenesis. So first of all, what is a host? The larger organisms that support the survival and growth of a smaller organism will be called a host. So the larger organism that is supporting the survival and growth of the smaller organism is host. What is pathogen and what is pathogenicity? Any organism that causes disease is known as the pathogen, right? And its ability to cause disease is called pathogenicity. Some, may, some organisms may be pathogen, some may not be pathogen. Okay, they may have pathogenicity, some may not have pathogenicity. Now, what is an opportunistic pathogen? Opportunistic pathogen is, an, is a microorganism or any pathogen that infects the host with a weakened immune system. Means if you have a strong immune system, opportunistic pathogens won't be able to infect or uh, do pathogenesis, right? And what is infection? When a pathogen is growing and multiplying within the host or on the host, the host is said to have an infection. Right? If a 
organism or pathogen is inside you or on your body so it will be called an infection now what is an infectious disease it is any change from a state of health in which a part or all of the host body is incapable of carrying out its normal functions due to the presence of pathogen or its products either pathogen or its products are causing a part or whole of the body incapable of carrying out its normal function then the uh, disease will be called infectious disease what is an etiological agent or etiologic agent etiologic agents are those microorganisms and microbial toxins that cause disease in humans and include bacteria bacterial toxins viruses fungi protozoans and parasites so whatever is causing disease is an etiologic agent now what are signs and symptoms signs are objective changes in the body such as fever or rash that can be directly observed so signs can be observed while symptoms are subjective changes such as pain and loss of appetite that can be experienced or felt by the patient it can they cannot be observed now what a, is a, a disease syndrome it's a set of set of signs and symptoms which are characteristics of a disease or characteristic of a disease so you know signs are observable symptoms are experienced disease syndrome is set of signs and symptoms now what is virulence virulence refers more specifically to magnitude of harm how much harm a pathogen can cause so how virulent it is okay so virulence refers more specifically to magnitude of harm caused by a particular microorganism what is infectivity infectivity is the ability of organism to establish a discrete focal point of infection okay so discrete focal point of infection that is now what is invasiveness invasiveness is the ability of the organism to spread to adjacent or nearby tissues okay so you know what is an etiologic agent signs symptoms what is disease syndrome what is virulence and what is infectivity and invasiveness right now you see there are different diseases uh, and their etiologic agent so what causes anthrax uh, bacillus anthracis causes it is the etiologic agent of anthrax and there are some usual or suspected non human host for these anthrax which are cattle horses goats other animals and birds even sometimes birds are non human or usual or new uh, suspected host and the normal method of human infection is inhalation of or ingestion of the spores of the bacilli uh, or coming in direct contact with the pathogen like likewise babesiosis brucellosis campylobacteriosis cat scratch disease cryptosporidiosis and encephalitis encephalomyelitis encephalomyelitis by um, our western equine right all these diseases have their specific etiological agents and they do have some non human hosts and there are some ways like inhalation of these spores bite of infected ticks or in case of brucellosis milk or direct or indirect contact with the pathogen in case of uh, campylobacteriosis contaminated water and food if you come in contact with cat scratch disease uh, is caused by dog or dog cat scratch and then cryptosporio sporidiosis is because of the contaminated water violence velitis Uh, which is caused by arboviruses maybe because of the mosquito bite so different etiological agents of for different diseases and different methods of human infection likewise there are many you can go through and learn about them remember a few examples right now uh, what is a zoonotic disease a zoonotic disease means that it can spread between animals and people so through animal it can transfer into people like uh, nipah virus is a zoonotic nipah virus cause disease is a zoonotic disease 
SARS-CoV-2 is also a zoonotic disease, right? Because it is known that it probably uh, infection, human infection occurred because in because of uh, coming in contact with infected animal, right? Likewise, SARS-CoV-2, which is really uh, has caused a great pandemic of the century so far. So this is also a zoonotic disease. Now let's see. Let's see uh, what is the course of infection or infection process. So first of all, upon entry, either it may sur not survive in the host or it may survive because of several, several mechanisms like I told you before also enzymes, toxins, invasions, auto inducers, etc. If it survives and finds a good niche for itself, then it can stabilize itself yeah, extracellularly or intracellularly it can survive, right? And it may acquire nutrients to different mechanisms. There may be by chance it may die or it may further establish and spread to other tissues. And it may uh, be, you know, in me, it may remain in the organism which is acting as a source or reservoir, right? It, and it can again repeat the cycle. And mostly to survive, microorganisms need a suitable environment, source of nutrients, and protection from harmful elements like host immune system. So they try to get a suitable environment, a source of supply of nutrients, and also some mechanisms to evade the host immune system. Right, and any infection, uh, an infection proceeds through four stages, I would say, right, first stage is the incubation period, where the intensity of symptom, or symptoms is really uh, least, or there are no symptoms, then comes a prodromal stage, where after incubation, when sufficient number of infectious agents uh, is there in body then prodromal state begins where uh, symptoms starts appearing and then a phase of illness or sickness uh, starts where the symptoms and signs uh, intensify then occurs the convalescent phase right where symptoms starts to you know decrease and signs starts disappearing. It may result in death if illness keeps increasing. Okay. And for uh, each disease, these four phase, four stages have a characteristic span. Each uh, stage is a characteristic characteristic feature for certain disease. Okay. Now you need to pay attention that what is a prodromal stage? It refers to the period after incubation and before the characteristic symptom or infection occur. People can people can also see uh, you know the you know signs of infection during the prodromal stage sometimes. I also want to. Uh, you guys to know that what are pathogenicity islands these pathogenicity islands are actually large segments of bacterial chromosomes which may be as long as 200 kb right or kilo basis and, and it, these may be present on the chromosome or plasmid dna and the important thing is that they encode virulence factors so these large segments of dna that is of chromosomal or plasmid DNA are known as pathogenicity islands. Now these genomic islands are acquired by microorganisms through horizontal gene transfer. Right, many bacteria like Yersinia, Pseudomonas, Shigella, Salmonella, Enteropathogenic E. coli, these carry at least one pathogenicity island. Okay, now what are the common sequence characteristics of these islands? First is that they are three prime and 5 prime ends are of these islands are like 
insertion like elements they contain insertion like elements suggesting their promiscuity as mobile genetic elements so they might be hopping from one location to another now their gc content of these uh, pathogenicity islands is significantly significantly different from remaining bacterial genome why because they are acquired from somewhere else right they are not their own now these uh, pathogenicity islands dna also exhibit several orf several orfs can present suggesting other putative genes presence of other putative genes in the pathogenicity islands for example e coli helicobacter legionella rhodococcus sol salmonella and other pathogens do have different pathogenicity islands like e coli have cag pi helicobacter pylori have pi3 likewise uh, other microorganisms also have pathogenicity islands now their gene products are what they are secretion proteins they are cdo4 synthesis synthesizing proteins and uh, either they are uh, ti4 secretion proteins or pili proteins right and what is their function these proteins either act as cytotoxic uh, cytotoxin or they help in their intracellular survival or they may act as super antigens okay and they may affect rna uptake and storage so basically they help in you know pathogenesis right so that's why pathogenicity islands what are these these are 10 to 200 kilo base bacterial chromosome and plasmid dna encoding virulence factor right? okay guys thank you for watching this video keep coming on to my channel do like and subscribe thank you one more time thank you